got these strawberry plants about a week ago and they need potting up, not least of all because the bees can't get to them while they're in the greenhouse. There you go. We're easing ourselves into the day today with this nice little job here. We're not procrastinating, it does need doing, but the job that we need to do later is gonna be hot, dirty, and potentially painful. We've even got some little baby strawberries on the way. Hopefully they'll be ready in time for Wimbledon. So what does the hay do? It acts as a mulch and also when the fruit grows it won't rot from being on wet soil and it looks cute. We've been making good progress this week. We've been coming out anytime we've got an hour or two spare, whether it's in the evenings or in the morning, and just continuing to chop away and chip the olive trees. We've done almost nearly this whole olive grove now, which is actually much quicker progress than I thought. However, there is just piles of branches and leaves everywhere because the cutting it's kind of quick. The slow part is the disposing of it, whether it's the chipping. I think we are going to have to burn some in the future because we'll be chipping until the autumn using that little chipper that we got last week. And one thing, chopping all of these that we were both quite surprised about is just what a different feel it gives to this olive grove. Whereas everything was very high before, now everything's low and flat and it just I don't really know how to describe it. How would you describe it? It feels a lot more open and I feel a lot taller than before. <laughs> yeah, it's just a very different vibe, but it does feel good to have everything trimmed. Now, although we are making good progress, there is still loads more to do. It feels like these olive trees are endless. A few people asked on the last video how many olive trees we have. So on this morning's dog walk, we actually counted because we haven't ever done that before. And the answer is 87 trees. Ricky estimated that we had somewhere between 60 and 70 olive trees. I reckoned we had something more like 100, 110. So we're in the middle at 87. Hey, coming. One second. Mulch man, here to save the day. <laughs> I tell you what, it never gets any easier or more enjoyable to get rid of brambles. They're horrible. If you're wondering what we're doing, over this back edge, it's absolutely overgrown and swamped by vines and brambles. And today, we are actually beginning the process of fencing the entire property. This is a big job and it's been on the list for ages but once we actually do it it's going to have such a big impact on our day-to-day -day life here on the farm. Oh I hate brambles. I think we might end up baking today because we're gonna have to keep our long sleeves on. This vine is literally going all the way from the ground on our side, right up to the very top of this oak tree. Time to give it a good old yank. I'll be honest with you guys, this is a job that neither of us <laughs> are getting any enjoyment out of. Working with brambles is just horrible, especially the big mature ones. They've got such sharp thorns on. They're piercing through our thick gloves, ripping through our clothes, ripping through our shoelaces, but we're carrying on and pushing on because getting this fencing done is really important to us, particularly at this moment in time, because it won't be long until we are taking the roof off and doing the roofing on the tiny house. We're both gonna be very preoccupied up on that roof and it's gonna be really long days and during that time we want the dogs to be outside we do not want to have to keep them inside all day because it's not fair on them but when they're outside with us at the moment although they're well behaved and they don't really stray we do still have to keep an eye on them because dogs will be dogs and you know another dog or another animal might come in and if we're both up on the roof and preoccupied we are not going to be able to get down in any type of hurry to resolve that problem so if the whole property is fenced 
dogs can just be out, they can roam around. We don't even have to give them a single thought. They can just be doing what they want and enjoying themselves. Also, because we're now planting vegetables and salad and things, we really don't want hogs and things like that to be coming in at night time and just munching everything. So far, we've been really lucky. We've not had any animals come in and cause any destruction to the vegetables or anything that we're growing, but you know, we do get them come through here. So it's only a matter of time if we don't fence soon. Just to give you an idea of how much we're trying to clear, that is three meters on the tape measure. There is so much material to move, to cut, to mulch. We need to keep going. <laughs> We're just trying to figure out the best plan of attack to free up this really established apple tree that we've got because it's being absolutely swallowed alive by brambles. And to be honest, it's been like this since the day we bought the property. So it's always had these things all weaving in and out of it. Obviously it's just got worse. So we really want to get all this out, free up this tree, and hopefully in the future, this tree will be a bit healthier and we can have some nice apples. <laughs> I can't believe that we can actually get behind this tree after so long. Yeah, you know how they say it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Well, in this case, it's 100% about the destination. The journey is unenjoyable. One star review, never want to take this journey again. I want a refund. So here's where we ended things yesterday. We actually managed to get done everything we wanted to, which is amazing we've cleared all of the brambles and the vines back to the bordering wall we've even managed to liberate the apple tree but the apple tree as you can see is in a really bad way we've never actually properly seen this apple tree because it's been covered the whole time we've owned the property so it needs some serious tlc because it's very overgrown it's not looking healthy but that's a job for another day. Right now, we both need to get on it and clear up all of the bramble mulch that was left behind because there are some massive thorns in it. And the last thing we want is for the dogs to be trampling over all this mulch and to be getting big, chunky thorns in their paws. <laughs> this is Ted's ball and it got lost in amongst all of the brambles around the apple tree probably I don't know like a year yeah about a year just over a year, year ago, ago before pop came along yeah anyway it was stuck in all of the brambles so we couldn't actually get in to rescue it but it feels like it's still in pretty good condition pretty indestructible nice I'm happy we found it I thought to be honest maybe a fox or a stray dog had got it and was having a whale of a time <laughs> We'll have to see later on if Ted even remembers it. He's not a one ball man. He's, uh, he's moved on. He's, got, he's had other balls since that one, so maybe he won't care. Maybe he'll remember the smell and he'll love it. We'll see. So that's the mulch raked up. I'm actually really surprised when you see it all stacked up, how much there is. The wall of mulch. It 
breaks our heart to do this, but this apple tree was in a similar, slightly worse condition to the one we've just liberated over there. But it's completely dead. We tried to prune it back, we tried to give it a little bit of TLC last year, but there were actually these termites that have completely hollowed out this tree. Apparently they don't cause the disease, they actually only eat dead wood. But there really is no hope for this, so we are going to cut it down now because if we don't do it now it's basically going to break our fence when we do install it because it's going to pass just behind where this tree is now. So I'm going to leave it there for today because that chain, I wasn't really expecting to do this and the chain on that chainsaw is as good as blunt so that took so much longer than it should have so i think it makes sense now that i've just taken off the one arm that's going to be in our way for today next time i'm out at the hardware shop i can buy a new chain and then i'll make light work of getting the rest down another day right here Let's get it there yeah that should work Ricky's making good progress, but we've both got our fingers crossed that he's not going to hit granite because there are so many boulders around this area. So that's the first hole dug and put some gravel in the bottom for drainage. We started on this area because basically this back end of the property, we knew this was going to be the most difficult, both for clearing the area for the actual fence line, but also because the wall and the, the border of the property kind of meanders and moves around. So we knew we were going to have to work out a point where it goes from point to point to point it wouldn't just be one straight long run so what we're doing right now is we are digging holes and putting in uh, thicker posts where those points are going to be so we know the paths are going to be we can run a string line before we put our other posts in we're not concreting anything on this project just because we've got so much land to fence if we have to start mixing concrete to pull these posts in it's going to add on a huge amount of time so what we're doing is we're digging tight holes for everything in the corners we're then going to put gravel in the bottom pack them back in with soil around tamp it down put gravel on the top for more drainage although today we're only putting in the one post where the line is going to go just so we can get the string line we are eventually going to have H braces either side of that. They will also have holes dug and the posts put in and kept nice and level just to get those really strong points in the corners and where the fence line pivots. And all the ones in between, we're just going to get a post hammer and just ram them into the earth because all the tension is going to be taken by these corner points. Those ones in between are basically just to hold the fence and also the wire that's going to go top and bottom in place. But we don't have a proper tamper, so what are we using? An olive branch. We thought we'd give it a go. It actually has worked pretty well, hasn't it? It's weighty, thin enough to get in the gaps. Pat on the back for the olive branch. So first post is in, we've topped it off with about 50, 60 mil of gravel, mounded up on the top, so that should make sure we get good drainage. So now we just need to run out a string line, work out where our next one's gonna go, and get putting more poles in. We're running a string line between all of the corner posts because there are areas like this terrace wall that have tumbled down and other areas that are really, really rocky. And it's going to enable us to see if there's anything that we need to shift to be able to actually get our posts in the ground. Oh, last post of the day. Are you styling this olive tree? Something like that. It's in the way of where we need to put this next post, so just want to wrap it up so it keeps it out of the way. So that's us done for today. We are due our big delivery of fence posts next week, but we actually already had these three. So we wanted to tackle this area because we knew that we got a lot to clear. So it feels really good to have these three in place and actually have started this whole process. 
So we're hoping that the rest of this fencing is gonna be much easier because everything else is kind of, although there are the odd bend here and there, it's mostly long straights. We don't really have to do any clearing apart from a bit of strimming to get a clear line and get the grass out of the way. One thing that we definitely are considering is uh, getting some type of machinery because using the manual post hole digger, it definitely does take much longer than it needs to. And obviously we're only doing one post on each corner or bend at the moment. When we actually come to finish these off, we need to put another post either side in like that. So I think we're gonna be looking at a petrol powered auging or arga machine. I, I don't know how you say it, I'll spell it here. How do you say this? Is it or or ah? But yeah, one thing I could really do with is an ice cold drink and to sit in the shade because today it's been about 25 degrees we've been working in. It's been pretty uncomfortable. So I wanna go and chill out with the dogs. to press flowers when I was younger and I was feeling a bit nostalgic and spring flowers don't stick around for very long so I thought I'd press some and perhaps use them in the future to make some cards from them. The hardest part of the whole process, apart from dogs getting in the way, <laughs> is actually pressing the flowers before they start to wilt. So, best get to it. <laughs> Good girl. It's like a big lasagna. <laughs> I've made this a little bit chunky with some of the heather that we've got. So I think I'm gonna get a backup clamp, one on either of the long sides, just to make sure it doesn't bow in the middle. Hopefully in a couple of weeks, we'll have some pressed flowers to show you. Yeah, it's definitely been a nice gentle way to end off this week after a rough couple of days battling brambles, but yeah, we're making good progress. I'm glad we've started that job now. Hopefully next week, We'll have more fencing delivered. Yeah. And we can continue with that onwards and upwards. Dead. What's this? Here it is. Ready? 